Patrick. Yeah. This one's gonna be hard. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be we really tough. We gotta tough. take it to the next level. We gotta do some next level. Yeah. Right? We know who we need. I know who we need. We need Marco. I'm making a wish. I d no, we don't need Marco. No. We oh. need Alberto. We need to go to the next level. We need to go to the next level. Marco can't do. handle this. Our next level. We need Alberto, right? So I'm gonna make a wish. Yep. I'm wishing. I'm wishing. Yo, what's up? This is Patrick. Alberto. And in this video, we're gonna talk about displaying a list of values using DAX and Power BI. Stay tuned. All right, Alberto. So my wish came true. My wish came true. You're here. I did a video on using that concatenated list of values. Quick measure. And somebody made a comment about, okay, Patrick. So what I did was I had a slicer and I select one year, I select another year, I select another year, and I just displayed them in the list. But they said, can you all the values? All the values, right? And I modified it a little bit to accommodate something, but they wanted to, instead of displaying all the values, display a range. Oh, cool. You follow me? And so I, I immediately posted an answer. I was like, oh, I'll write some DAX for you, because I'm good, right? I took you guys' it's class, and I'm good. But then, as soon as I post the question, I go, I bet you there's a blog post or an article or something, and somebody have already did it. So you open up your favorite web browser of choice. I use Bing, right? And I did a quick search, and bam, I landed on your article. And I start reading through it, and I go, I think I can explain this, but I wish Alberto was here to explain this for me. You think you could do that for me? I can. All right, let's get By to the way, it. You know how that article was born? No, tell me. I just woke up in the morning, uh, and what's the first thing to do when you wake up? Drink a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so the article was born. The article was born, I mean, it was early morning. Mm -hmm. I woke up, I found this interesting question, and I started working on it and thinking at it. And um, typically, I wake up my kids, I prepare them breakfast and stuff, and I didn't yep. do anything that morning. I was just thinking and thinking, <laughs> I wanted to solve the problem. Yep, so you're gonna show me this, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So instead of all this talking, you guys know how I like to do, right? Let's head over to your laptop. So you see, I have this uh, Power BI file, mm -hmm. and you have the months selected here, and I have a label here that yep. shows up the selected month. Gotcha. If you select May, if you select June, the label changes. Yep. And if you select different values like March and May, that works. You yep. show March and May. Mm -hmm. The cool thing is that you can select, you can select March. May, June, July, and oh. you see what happens? It shows March and then May to July. What if I just select the December? December. What if I skip all the way to December? That's oh. not the problem. And if you, you can also have multiple ranges, mm -hmm. it just works. Oh, I like it, I like it, I like it. Can you show me how this works? Absolutely, okay. it's a piece of DAX. Now, just focus on the list of months because we are going to start from here when we look at the code. Okay, okay. We have a list of months, some of them are selected, some of them are not. Okay. So, what does this piece of DAX do? The selected months, month numbers is just a variable that contains the values of the month number. Gotcha. So we are not taking the month names, we are taking the month numbers. Oh, Got so it? not strings. Not strings. Oh, okay. The, the slicer contains the strings. I don't mind about the strings for now. Mm -hmm. I mind about the numbers. Gotcha. Because I want to sort them yep. the right way. Yep, yep, yep. And then I have another variable, months and names, that contains both months and name, so it contains the number mm -hmm. and the name. Gotcha. We gotcha. will use the two variables for two different purposes. Okay. okay. Now, the thing is, in order to generate this list, you need to understand that scanning this list of months, oh. whether you are at the beginning of a series, at the end of a series, or in the middle of it. Because that's the hard part, in the middle. In the middle. Oh, yes. But it's not that hard, okay. because uh, concatenate X is just an iterator, so it is uh, scanning the month and names uh, uh, variable. Gotcha. So we have both month and names in the same variable. So we have the number and the name? And the name in okay. the same table. Got you. From here we take the month number and we store it in current month number. And current oh. month name is the current month name. Jeez. Just two variables. Yes. Yep. Then, in order to understand whether you are at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end, you simply check if the next month is in the selected month. Oh. And now remember, selected months only contains the selection. So yes. when you are in March, you check, is April selected? Yes. If April is not selected, I am at the end of a series. Got you. Okay. I got you, I got you. Previous selector tell me if the previous month is selected. So I was in April, I checked for March. Yep. Was March selected? Yep. It might be yes or no. Yep. Now, the trick is, while you're scanning month by month, 
when you are at the beginning, you just uh, output your name, the month name. Yep. If you are at the end, you output a comma because uh, what comes uh, next is a next series. Yes. If you are at the beginning but not at the end, then you output a dash. A dash, right. So, so if I if I have May in the list, and you then, are on May, and then I have October in the list. It's smart enough to say, hey, you're at the end on May, put a comma and go to the next month. No, that's okay. different. All right. It just can. Look at the, this list. Okay. Yep. The mm -hmm. list will contain March, May, June, yep. July. Yep. So it goes on March yep. and say, well, I am in March. Is the previous selected? Nope. No. Is the next selected? No. Right. Because it's April. Yep. Okay. Therefore, it just outputs the name gotcha. as it is, followed by a comma. Gotcha. Because yep. the next is not selected. When it will be May, it just outputs the name, mm -hmm. followed by what? Because the next is selected, it's followed by a dash. Then it will find June. June is in the middle. Both the previous and the next are selected. That's why you have the previous and the exactly. next. Exactly. Yes. So June will be skipped. Yep. Got it. Then it goes on July. Yep. The previous is selected. The next is not selected. So it outputs the name followed by a comma because and it's the done. list is finished. Got it. Okay. Got it. At the end of this whole process, this is happening here. If the previous is selected and the next is selected, if they are not both selected, mm -hmm. then it outputs the current name plus a dash or a comma, depending if it's the first or the last oh, of the selection. Wow. <laughs> My mind is blown. But it's so cool. Yeah. At the end of all this process, what happens is that you have a last comma that remain there. Uh, because it's not smart enough to understand that uh, the last doesn't have a following uh, section. And that's and this that. is why that's the left. Left uh, says, hey, out of the result, get rid of result minus two. And that's getting rid of the comma in the space. Exactly. Oh. And you can easily see, if you, instead of returning everything, you just return result, you, you see that there is a trailing comma at the end that need to be removed. So take, can, you, can you take it out? Absolutely. That's yeah. why we use variables. Yeah. So you can see <laughs> we can uh, debug it. We, we can debug it with variables. Absolutely. You yeah. can return result, and then we get rid of uh, the DAX code. And you see that we have uh, uh, this comma at the end the, that need to be removed. So the engine the engine, the formula said we have March and March was enough. Then we have my that was the first, so it up output the dash, then it skipped the month in between and it output July. It skipped yeah. the month in between because there was one before and, and one, one after. after that. Yes, so I got they it. were in between yep. a list of different values. Yep. And the result yep. is pretty nice yep. because that way you can produce the list of values in a human readable way. But it's critical that we use numbers and not try to use strings, right? If we want it to be in a right in a proper order. Exactly. Yeah. And this is the reason why we have two variables. The month and names contains both the month and the names, and we use it because we want to get the names. But when we want to check if the previous or the next is selected, we use the in operator. Mm -hmm. In requires a table. Gotcha. So it checks a number that is present in a table. That table need to only contains numbers. It cannot contain numbers and strings, otherwise it will not find them. And we, we're, that's, we the, the numbers make it easy so we can go forward and go back. Exactly. Yeah, got that's it. That's why we have got the it. numbers. Got it. So, man, this is great. So now I understand, and I may be able to write this, but I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Thank you so much, Alberto. Thank if you. you guys have questions, comments, anything, right? You know what to do, post it in the comments below. This is your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, you know what to do hit that subscribe button, right? If you like my video and Alberto, you gotta give me two big thumbs up, as always, from Adam and myself and Alberto. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. That was awesome. one take. Great. <laughs>